Greetings folks, yeah, this video is going to be a little bit more about the Foxtech H-Wing. As you can see in the last video, I have got it flying properly. Um, it has been a bit of a, a road to get it flying properly, and I'll talk a, bit, a little, little bit more about that in this video. As I said, I couldn't get my phone uh, screen app recording in the previous video, uh, which was very disappointing, so I didn't have a lot of good footage to show you. Uh, I'll address that in the coming videos. Um, I have also been asked how uh, it performs when you in wing mode when you drop the throttle down to zero. Um, well, I guess I'll test that at some stage, uh, but I'll get up nice and high <laughs> in case something uh, weird happens. I really don't know what it's going to do. I think it may even just fly along uh, in a sort of high alpha mode, uh, but we'll find out anyway. Seems to fly at a, at a fixed sort of mid-throttle cruise preset cruise rate which is, is reasonably fast so it gets out of line of sight pretty quickly uh, and that's why I haven't shown any close-up line of sight flying I need to learn how to fly it uh, and get a bit more confident with it first uh, okay so what I had to do to get it flying when I initially had it I couldn't get the GPS uh, to lock on here as a home position uh, I could find plenty of satellites but I couldn't get the GPS to go to the home position to change from China to Australia uh, and so uh, I went back to Foxtech and they gave me some instructions to connect by Q ground control. Search for a, a parameter, uh, SACC. That comes up with a, a GPS um, horizontal speed parameter that I had to drop from 0.6 metres per second down to 0.1, uh, down to 1 metres per second. Uh, try again, acquire satellites and lock on to the home position and that worked and that sort of meant that the uh, HEQ app had learnt this as the home position so then I could go back in and, and uh, change back to uh, that SACC parameter back to 0.6. I think the default setting is 0.5 but uh, they recommended 0.6 so I have it at 0.6 at the moment and, and it, it's, uh, it's actually working. It will find uh, this is the home position without any problems. Connecting via Q ground control had no problems finding this is the home position because that already knows. Uh, I've used that for other things before. And uh, Foxtech came out with an updated version of the, of the HEQ app and that's available on the website at the moment. Hopefully that addresses that particular issue. I also had another problem at one stage where I couldn't switch to uh, wing mode. I could hover in VTOL mode, but it wouldn't switch to wing mode. Um, and I think that was after they gave me a, a firmware update and I don't think my firmware update actually worked properly. So I just redid that again. And from then on, it's been behaving normally. So those two things, make sure you've got the latest version of HEQ uh, on your phone. Uh, and I don't know if they've released the updated firmware. Hopefully all new versions come with the updated firmware. And a chap that I've been chatting with, uh, Martin Raven, has been having the similar sorts of problems um, and he's been documenting it all over on that RC Groups thread. So I'll put a link in the description and that will um, show you all the issues, all the links uh, that you need to, to get the thing working. Another possible issue that you could have is that uh, the HEQ app relies on your phone, it relies on Bluetooth and the connection to your phone as well. So if any of those things are not perfect, then you're going to probably have problems uh, running the HEQ app. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this phone is a little bit dodgy with its Bluetooth connection, so that could have been part of my problem. Um, and Martin is also finding out that you need a good mobile phone coverage to bring up the uh, map view on, on the HEQ app. So there are a few little issues that are related more to your phone and your phone coverage than to the app and the and the plane or the VTOL. Anyway, um, flying from the phone screen, uh, I never like flying from the phone screen. It's too small and uh, not bright enough in, in the sunshine I find. Uh, so, and the FPV view, although they say the camera is 720p, and uh, 24 frames a second, what you get on your phone screen is sort of stuttery, low quality video, I find. Uh, and there's no option for recording that video in the app. Uh, the only way you can record it is by doing a screen record using a, a third party app. 
So I think that's something they can address in the future, just uh, somehow add the FPV recording, uh, maybe even onto the SD card in the flight control board or something like that. That's something that needs to be addressed. My solution is to add uh, a DJI HD FPV camera in there. This is the Cadex Nebula Pro. Uh, all I've done is uh, instead of putting a, an action camera in there, I've made up a block of foam with a bit of plywood and mounted the, the uh, air unit, whatever it is, Vista unit and uh, uh, Cadex camera there, little antenna there. I don't know how that's going to interact with anything else. I haven't flown it yet. Uh, and I've taken the power, uh, just soldered on to the battery pads on the flight control board. Very easy to pull that flight control board out, by the way. It's just the two ESC plugs and the uh, connection plug undo the four plastic screws and it pulls out beautifully. Then you can um, just solder onto the battery pads. Uh, so there's little wire coming to the front and powering the um, Cadex unit there. And I'll be able to record into my DJI goggles and have a fantastic FPV view. Uh, and then I can sort of take the goggles off and glance at the, the phone screen to get um, distance, height, uh, and even look at the FPV view on there as well. H-Wing uses 2.4 gigahertz video. Uh, it's best, supposed to have a range of 10 kilometers. The DJI will only have a range of maybe six kilometers. So um, not that I'm into long range, uh, only fly line to side, of course. That will give a backup, good quality video recording and FPV, as well as sort of distance backup. As for arming, uh, arming is throttle down and your right, and disarming is throttle down and your left. I think Foxtech are getting confused between mode one and mode two, and arming and disarming. There's a little bit of a um, a few errors there in their instructions, I think, which confused me for a little while. We also have altitude hold and position hold. They're the only other choices on this radio using the ATQ app. Uh, I think you just leave it in position hold all the time. I haven't really worked that out yet. Um, certainly when you're in wing mode, it doesn't circle in, in a position hold or a loiter. It uh, flies as you want. Uh, possibly in VTOL mode, they have different functions. I haven't actually tried that yet. I have been asked how it flies compared to a normal wing in wing mode. Um, I would say it flies like a wing in angle mode in uh, INAV. It is very, very stabilized, self-leveling, uh, flies at a set throttle. And because I've only had one flight really, I haven't really worked out how the controls control each axis. It does seem to, the way I was flying, it does seem to does seem to roll and turn in nice coordinated turns. I thought it would do sort of flat skidding turns, but uh, no, it does actually turn nicely, but very, very slow turn rate. So there's no way you could do any aerobatics. It's, it's just for directing it around the sky like a, a GPS a controlled quad, I guess. It's more of a camera setup than a, a flying wing. And it's more set up for missions and uh, action cam recording than a, and than a, a sort of a nice FPV flying experience. However, with the DJI's compatible camera in there, that uh, should make it a fun FPV experience as well. I need to get out and fly it a little bit more and um, hopefully that video will come up soon. It may be a little while before I can get out and fly again. Uh, life is intervening, um, but I thought I'd give you this catch-up video uh, in the meantime. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later.